here's a fraction, right? And they want to turn one fraction into two fractions, right? Each of these fractions is kind of like a part of this fraction, which is why later on you're going to learn what we're about to do, this technique, it has a whole name of its own because it's so useful. Because each of these fractions is a part of the original one, these are called partial fractions, okay? Uh, it's not going to be immediately obvious why this is so useful, but I'll try and convince you as we go through, okay? So they want to express this in terms of this, so these are going to be equal and always equal, right? Now, in exactly the same way that my approach here was just, just expand the sucker, right? And then see what you can compare. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to try and go in reverse, right? If I put these two fractions together, right, I'm going to have a common denominator of x plus 1, x plus 2, but that's going to change these numerators when they come together, right? So this first guy is going to be ax plus 2, and the second one will be bx plus 1. Are you content with that? Okay, I've just added two fractions, right? Now that I've written this line, I can compare the coefficients of the numerators, right? Because the denominators are identical. Maybe I should just do one more step, and what you've got on the, on the top here is a linear function, right? So let's just put it into a nice neat form that makes the comparison of coefficients just a bit clearer. Okay, so what have I got here? Match up your x terms, I've got a plus b, and then I've got my constant terms hanging off on the end. <clears throat> Alright, let's compare. Once I compare the two, my a plus b, that's going to be equal to 2. My 2a plus b, that's going to be equal to 3. Okay. Now, you'll like this. Okay, by inspection, <laughs> I can see um, the solutions for A and B, it, it doesn't take very long. When you do, you do an elimination here, right? You go 2 take away 1, leaves you with A equals 1, right? If A is equal to 1, then clearly from the first equation, B is also equal to 1. Okay, so I have my two values, so now I can go back to my very first line and say, therefore, this original fraction is made up of can be, they say, decomposed, decomposed, into these two partial fractions, right? One on this, plus one on this, okay? So what's the big deal? Why do we do this, okay? Um, part of the reason why won't be clear until next term, and I will show you, okay? But I can tease a little bit, because if I gave you this function, okay? I gave you this function, I said, okay, now I'm gonna change the question a little bit. I want to graph this thing, and I want to know everything I possibly can about this. Well, we've learned calculus now, right? So a question that's not that unreasonable is to differentiate this thing, right? Now when you look at it, you're like, oh, gross, okay? It's um, a quotient, it's a quotient. It's not a very nice quotient either. Look at that messy denominator, okay? So you're going to go u, v, v, u dash minus u, v dash on v squared, and then you get a bit of a disaster, really, okay? You can do it, it's not impossible, it's just a bit long and messy. But, because I have shown this, if I want to differentiate uh, this guy, right, if I want to differentiate that, and these are exactly the same, they're exactly the same, then this is the same as differentiating this pair of fractions. Okay? Now, at least for the differentiation step and for some other steps that you will learn soon, right? This is much easier. Much, much, much easier. Because for both of these guys on the right-hand side, I don't have to write them as quotients, do I? How else could I write these guys? Oh. I can write them as uh, powers, right? This is x plus 1 to the power of minus 1, negative 1, right? Plus x plus 2, the same deal, right? So now these are both... Not quotients, but I can do these as chain rule. And they're really easy for chain rule, right? Come on, give me the first one. Minus Negative one x. Take the power out the front. X plus one. one. X plus one. Minus two. Reduce the power by one. Minus Derivative two. of the inside. It's one. Which is one, so I'm just going to leave it. And then I've got this guy. Minus. Minus x plus two. Bring the power down. Two. Derivative Times of the inside. One, one so I'm just going to leave it. So I guess if I wanted to, I could just write the fractions.
look ma, no question, okay? So that was much better, and as you will see, there are even more useful things you can do once you have partial fractions, okay? Yeah? Um, but how would you know to come to that fact? Like, um, the question is told you it's A over X plus one plus B over X plus one. Yes. How would you just think about yourself? Um, Number one, often you don't have to. Often, like part one of a question will be, please do this, oh, okay. right? And then part two will be, okay, now do this. Okay. But secondly, when you see this, and they, sometimes they won't tell you, you should look at this, and sometimes what they're asking you to do with this thing is either impossible or requires techniques that you haven't ever learned. So you need to put it into this form because this thing you can manipulate, or you can at least manipulate it easier, as you'll see. Okay? okay?